Okay, so I chose Barbara Walters as my person, and she's the woman who shattered the glass ceiling of TV news. Barbara was born in 1929 in Boston, and she was born Jewish, even though uh, her parents weren't practicing. She had an older brother that she never got to meet because he died of pneumonia in 1932, and she had an older sister named Jackie, um, for short, who was born with... Um, she was developmentally disabled and died of ovarian cancer. Uh, Barbara dedicated her memoir audition to her sister Jackie and to her daughter, whose name was also Jacqueline, uh, named after her sister and her mother. And she dedicated it because she believes that Jackie had a very strong impact on her life and gave her a lot of empathy for people. Her father was named Lou Walters, and he was a very interesting man to grow up with as a father. He basically was a financial roller coaster in her life because uh, he was in the biz of show business. So Barbara experienced the lows of poverty and the highs of being very wealthy. Lou moved their family around a lot, so they moved from Boston to Miami to New York back to Miami again, and um, while growing up with her father, uh, Barbara was surrounded by celebrities, and she believes this is why she's so relaxed and candid when interviewing famous people. Because they moved around so much, she jumped between three different high schools, one in uh, Boston, one in Miami, and one in New York. She graduated from the one in Miami, Beach High School, and she graduated college uh, with a bachelor's degree in English. Now, starting out in her career, she had a brief stint as a secretary until she got her first journalism job and um, underneath Ted McCary, and that is where she sharpened her writing and producing skills until she was hired to write for the morning show. So then she joined the Today Show in 1961 as a report, as a researcher and a writer. And initially she covered uh, fluff pieces, and it was a hard job to get because she was um, one out of seven people who was only a woman in the newsroom, saying that you didn't get to be the female writer unless the other one got married or died. So eventually she got to become the Today Girl, uh, after a few months of writing fluff, she got fed up with it and lobbied for a big uh, breakthrough assignment that she got and did so well on that the network gave her more responsibility as a reporter, writer, and panel member on the show. So in 1961, she landed her first on-air assignment. So three years later, by 1964, she became a staple on the show, uh, earned the nickname Today Girl, and uh, served as a co-host, though she wasn't named co-host, till 1974 when uh, Frank McGee passed. By being the first female co-host, Walters made history on the Today Show. Um, ironically enough, though, she was restricted from asking serious questions of the guests until the male co-host had finished asking his which is very ironic because Walters is known for asking the tough questions. So despite that sexism, for lack of a better term, in that career, she still was able to hone in on her trademark interviewing skills and establish herself as a competent journalist. Then ABC Evening News came along and enticed her in a $1 million annual salary, which set another historic record in her career and in female news anchoring careers in general. Um, so she accepted the job becoming co-anchor of a network evening news program. In that same year, in 1976, she also moderated the uh, third and final presidential debate, and she launched um, the Barbara Walter specials, which still air today, um, especially the 10 Most Fascinating People piece. Now, despite her success, haters are going to hate, and many critics were skeptical of her qualifications to the point that they questioned the move of her becoming the news anchor as a publicity stunt. Uh, 
one of the most outspoken was actually her co-anchor, Harry Reasoner. And even though ABC's market research indicated that male's new, male news anchors were not exclusively preferred by the audience, uh, they still kind of blamed her, in a way, for the lack of viewers, even though the lack of viewers was because there was a lot of tension between the two of them. So in two years, the network released Walters, and she went to join 2020. And her first year there, she scored an exclusive interview with uh, President Richard Nixon. By the fall, she was a regular contributor. And by 1984, she was a co-host. And she was co-host and chief correspondent for about 20 years. Her salary of $1 million eventually moved up to $12 million dollars yearly, making her the highest paid news host in history, and she stepped down from that position at the age of 73 to start up The View. So she was still reporting for 2020 when she started up The View in 1997. Uh, she was co-executive producer with Bill Getty and co-host. She wanted to create a program that featured unique perspectives on various topics. Um, with a large panel of only women. So the people on the left is the first panel of women on The View, with Barbara hanging out there in her blue scarf. By 2013, she decided to make the announcement that she was going to retire from TV journalism. Uh, she said, I don't want to appear on another program or climb another mountain. I want instead to sit in a sunny field and admire the very gifted women, and okay, some men too, who will be taking my place. Her last episode aired May 16, 2014. So everybody kind of scoffed at the idea of her retiring. Uh, even Diane Sawyer said, I don't believe she's going to. Uh, and it was true. She still does special events and things like that, like the 10 most fascinating people each year. She's won a ton of awards throughout her years. I don't even think that's all of the awards she's won, that's just everything I was able to find. Um, multiple Emmy Awards, and she accepted her Lifetime Achievement Award in 2000, which is crazy because she stopped doing The View in 2014. So, still had a lot of lifetime left to live. Now, her personal life was a bit more scattered. She had three ex-husbands, but four divorces. Uh, Merv Adelston, they were on and off. He's the one pictured on the left. And then with Lee Goober, she had her daughter, Jackie, uh, her adoptive daughter. Then there was Scandal when she wrote her memoir audition in 2006 because uh, basically she talked about her affair with U.S. Senator Edward Brooke during 1970s. Now, she left a lasting impact on journalism by shattering the glass ceilings for women by being the first woman to co-host, the first female news network anchor. She was a driving force in the rise of superstar TV personalities. If it wasn't for Barbara, we wouldn't have people like Anderson Cooper, or at least Anderson Cooper wouldn't have the level of fame he has. And um, she launched her namesake primetime specials and debuted The View. Crazy, crazy talented, brilliant woman. And then she recreated the interview process on how to talk to anyone about practically anything. Um, she was always extremely pre uh, prepared for interviews to the point where she would write down on note cards every question she had and ask everybody in her circle of friends, what would you ask this person I'm about to interview? To the point that she asked Audrey Hepburn what kind of tree Audrey would be, and Audrey said, I would be an oak because they are strong and beautiful. You know, Barbara had a knack of providing viewers with a three-dimensional view of these larger-than-life personalities. And that's what made a lasting impact in how she interviewed people. And then finally, her lasting, biggest lasting impact in my perspective is the path that she bulldozed for women in TV news. Even Star Jones said, there's no woman that does not, uh, that does what we do that won't say Barbara Walters is her idol. She took the arrows that were shot her way and women were able to advance in that field because of Barbara. Now on the left is a picture of Barbara and her daughter, Jackie. The end.